Tell the devil he's a liar. Throw the boat out of the raging sea. Free the people from the fire. It's what we're called to do. We're called to minister a word that will set the people free and that they won't have to enter into the fires of hell. Over the decades and centuries, it's gone downhill, hasn't it? The churches have corrupted to a point now they can't even be recognised as a true church. They're just social clubs. And uh, the people go along and think it's the greatest thing ever. They're thinking they're actually receiving revelation now that God is a teddy bear and not a judge. That God never created and manufactured a place called hell. That's obviously the devil's doing. Seeing the devil is treated like the creator today. <laughs> Every time you see a dust storm or a flood or uncontrolled fires, it's the devil. Every time a baby dies, it's the devil. Every time there's a divorce, it's the devil. But we read in the scriptures different, don't we? We read in Jeremiah where God took women away from men, and I believe vice versa, because one of them wasn't walking with God, as they should have been. And everyone said, Amen, amen and Amen. 25th today, only till midnight though, of the 11th, 20, no it's not the 25th, it's the 2nd of the 12th, sorry about that, yeah, yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away, 2nd of, of the 12th, 218, nosing into the Santee season, which we don't have any part of, hey? Right? Because we know that Santa was orchestrated by Father Christmas direct from his loins. Direct from Adamic loins. Nothing to do with the Messianic. Amen? Amen. We're all about the Messianic. And uh, Second of the twelfth, two eighteen, Paradise Now Church, Brisbane, Sunday meet. So, let me continue on about the devil, the wiles of the devil. As we read the scriptures, we become more aware of the wiles of the devil, and uh, we learn how to handle him. We don't give any credence to the devil. Also, meaning we don't give any credence to lies or liars. Once you find out people are lying, especially ministers, you stay clear. You have nothing to do with them. Lies are like poison. The truth is like medicine. And also we know that a merry heart maketh good like a medicine. But we know that a merry heart can't save us, can we? Oh, can it? A merry heart can't save us. We can be ha 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 he he ho ho ho. You know, we can do the Santa thing, but it won't save us. We can acknowledge Jesus maybe was a baby and was born, but he was a good chap. And um, he made for good community. Until we realise that Jesus is God Almighty manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached on to Gentiles, received on in the world and received up in the glory, that Jesus is the Almighty, Revelation 1 and the verses 8. Uh, we're not really going to make any ground, are we? What's going on around us? Before we go into that, let's welcome... Uh, brother, brother Blade here today. Let's give him a hand. So, 
brother, brother Blade, who uh, came to the Lord this week, was water baptised all within a few hours, which is the way it should be done. There should be no hum about it. And we come to the Lord, we want to do what he says. We don't say, I'll think about that and I'll uh, let you know next year. No, I doubt if that one came to the Lord. Now, we're not coming to the manager at Kmart, we're coming to the Lord. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, God Almighty. Hey? Messiah, Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Hey? Yahweh, Sabbath, Lord of a warring people. Galilee Lamb, man from Galilee. Son of man, Son of God. Elohim, Emmanuel, God with us. It, that is if we're with him. <laughs> God is not with you if you're not with him. God, God will never leave me or forsake me, but you will leave him or forsake him. You can. I hope you don't, but you can. So we have a free will. Tasmania, what's going on on the Apple Isle? I used to live in Tasmania for a spell on the East Coast. Elephant Paths. I really liked it. They're very simple, bordering on backward in some areas, but, you know, very hillbilly-ish. Um, Tasmania, there's a politician down there by the name of uh, Mrs Casey O'Connor. It sounds a little bit Irish, doesn't it? And she's pushing hard for legislation to be drawn up for no gender birth certificates. Given that her son is now in the midst of transitioning from female to male. There's no doubt we're in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah once again revisited. It's been a conversation very heavy this week. Brother Blade and myself witnessed uh, the carry on of people of Sodom and Gomorrah only this week. Very strong, evil spirits were surrounding us. And you can talk to him later on about that. Actually, you can talk to Brother Blade how glorious it is now for him that he has surrendered to the Lord. Blade. Brother Blade was always a believer. He was a bit like me in one way, a bit like Brother Philip in another way, Brother Philip from Paddy. It, it, you know what I mean? A bit like Brother Thomas in another way, you know, doubting there. Uh, but, whoops. Uh, you know, there does come a, a time when we have to straighten up, you know, come out of the speed wobble and straighten up. You know, and uh, the Lord knows that time. I believe that time is the actual time of visitation, the time of conversion, as it was for Pedro the Apostle, denied the Lord, but he didn't keep doing that time and time again or once a year. It just happened and that was it. It was a one off and he moved on. Anyway. Um, I was looking at the RNS religious news services on the internet on Twitter and it said there because it's the sandy season it says note you know or behold uh, remember your donation can be doubled during the sandy season well it actually said Christmas yeah. as of the 31st uh, up to the 31st of December that's to help, help with the visuals and the stories that the RNS produce. Very sketchy, very one worldy. Um, one world church, though. A bloke found $10 million in a storage unit. He bought the storage unit, like you see on television, and they buy a, a unit, a storage unit that someone's left behind, and you know and they'd pay a certain price for it. 
he paid seven hundred dollars, and they said ah, seven hundred for the man, three hundred, two hundred, and he paid seven hundred dollars for the storage unit, whatever was in there, and there was ten million dollars sitting in a bag. What do you think of that one? That's not a bad uh, profit, is it? Tonight, tornadoes are springing up everywhere. Uh, we look at the news and we got tornado strength fire storms. We got flash floods. Biggest drought in Australia in a hundred years. A government that can't run the country. Churches that no longer preach sin, Satan, hellfire, hell, or the devil. Uh, we got people out there in churches even thanking their lucky stars that they never lost their house in the fire, thanking their astrologers. Okay? Come on, what does all that sound like to you? It sounds like Matthew 24 a bit, doesn't it? It sounds like the coming of the Lord is near. Okay? Everything I said here this morning sounds like the coming of the Lord is near, the selling of the Word of God, the transitions of male to female and female to male. The government that can't run, the government. 8,000 people evacuated from near my hometown, Rockhampton, Gracemere. 8,000 people evacuated. Unheard of. One in six people in Australia are Hindu now. It's the fastest growing religion in the country. Hindu. Peace, peace. But still no peace. Think about these things. And then let the Lord take you to the scriptures. It's all relevant, isn't it? It's all there. Look at us in the face. That the Lord is near than ever before. Two of the most influential, just listen to this. These two are considered the most influential men on Twitter. Donald Trump, who's a whoremonger and a liar, serial liar and a whoremonger, hangs out with evangelicals in America and the evangelicals exalt and promote a... Uh, whorehouse owner Donald Trump and Justin Bieber hey Donald Trump and Justin Bieber well Justin Bieber is a mocker of God a friend of Hillsong well they're mockers aren't they they mock God day after day Brian Houston was on the television this morning saying just because you're more spiritual it, it doesn't mean you're closer to God see he's making room for the carnal he's, he's making room for the Adamic he's making room for materialism he's making room for more money and then he went in again and the next stab he had was oh the women in the Bible were more spiritual than the apostles. And I thought to myself, well, we know who's running his house, don't we? <laughs> and it ain't Jesus. <laughs> the Holy Ghost said this to me, straight away. And this can either be the devil talking to me, or the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Draw near to me and I'll... Oh, just because, you, you know, you're spiritual, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you're close to God. And then the Holy Spirit gave me John chapter 4. Can we go there, please? This just totally shows you what Brian Houston is. He, he's a religious thief. John 4. He's a peddler of the word of God. He sells the word. Fattens himself 
with the wages of the labourer and only lies to them in return. John 4 and the verse is 24. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And what does verse 23 say? The hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship Father in spirit and truth. John 4, 23, 24. Oh, just because you're spiritual, it doesn't mean you're close to God. See, he's trying to cancel out the prophets of the, of the New Testament. He's trying to cancel out the prophets of today. See, prophets are spiritual men. True prophets, they don't care less about buildings. They're not governed by buildings or numbers and bums on seats. They're not governed by money. They're not governed by uh, luxury or, or, or how I feel. I don't feel so well today. Oh, feelings, nothing more than feelings. True prophets are governed by the Holy Ghost. They're led by the Lord. They walk by faith in the Son of God. They're spiritual men. You see, you got someone, I don't care if he's on the internet and there's millions of them there saying they're, they're pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers and evangelists. They're just crooks, charlatans, crooks. Can't justify what they say. The moment you ask them to justify it, you don't see them again. Or well, they get angry and start abusing you. Name calling. A spiritual man is uh, forever promoting the spiritual. Forever promoting Jesus. God is spirit. Jesus is spirit. There's no bother with racism there, is there? He's not black, he's not white, he's spirit. And you cannot worship him any other way except to be in the spirit. Your worship is rendered void. And what do you mean by in the spirit? I mean Romans 8, 14. Led by the spirit. What do you mean led by the spirit? I mean obeying the word of God. The truth. Spirit is the Holy Ghost and truth is the word. Can someone say amen? amen. So you got blokes out there claiming they're spiritual men and they live in luxury. They're nothing but frauds. Because in order to have luxury, you have to be working towards luxury. Your time is spent trying to attain luxury. But a spiritual man, I tell you what, he, he's so much uh, adrift from that. He's so far away from that. Because... His time is spent in prayer and the Word. That's Acts 6, verse 4. Those men in Acts 6, verse 4, were called to the Word and prayer or conversation with God. They're forever in tune. They're in sync with the Lord God. Anyone can come out of anywhere and they can give them the answer to their problem. They can direct them in the path they should take and it will be righteousness and nothing less. And everyone said, Amen. so oh, rock and roll, Brian. Uh, let me say this uh, about, oh, you know, if, you, if you're spiritual, it doesn't mean that you're close to God. And then he tried to say that the women in the Bible were closer to God uh, than the apostles. Well, you tell me this. And this one's a good one for, oh, Jesus, Jesus fellowshiped with sinners, you know. Jesus hung out with the sinners. No, he never. Jesus never hung out with sinners. Jesus ministered to the sinners. And when Jesus went away, he took only 12 people with him and took them aside into his private time. Can someone say amen? amen. He, he, he didn't take the women with him. He didn't take the sinners with him. He took the 12 apostles with him and expounded and gave them the good oil, expounded upon 
script. Can someone say amen? And their hearts burnt within them as he unraveled the word to them on the Emmaus Road. Amen? Amen. Glory. I used to go to Emmaus College. As a good Roman Catholic sinner, I went to Emmaus College. <laughs> uh, dear me. So, moving right along. Uh, after what I uh, have read here this morning, and even more. Now, the government, you know, the government, uh, in relation to teen, teen sexting, teen sexting, I call it depraved. I call it perverted texting. But anyway, this is what the government thinks of it. I mean, they're already in Sodom and Gomorrah, so they might as well just raise the banner. And this is raising the banner, isn't it? That we're in Sodom and Gomorrah. Australian government's in Sodom and Gomorrah. Teen sexting has now been labelled by the government as part of the normal sexual development of a teenager. And, wait, there's more. Dem tell, there's more. Wait, the best is yet to come, Brian Houston said. And his pedophile dad said the same thing. The best is yet to come, boys. My golden boys. Teen sexting has been labelled by the government, not by the Lord, by the government as part of the normal sexual development. Look, I pity the little ones today. You know, I actually said to my son and my daughter, but they can do as they will, they have a free will, don't have any children. Because in this day and age, I tell you what, you're going to be run ragged. You know what the scriptures say about having children in the last days? It says, it's going to say this. The Bible says, this is Jesus. I mean, he's omniscient. I don't care who nods their head or shakes their head, rolls their eyes or gives me the elvis lip, you know. I don't care. It's thus says the Lord for me or shut up. <laughs> and Jesus said that even the barren, they will speak of the barren women as being blessed. Blessed is the barren who have bore no children. Because they won't have the heartache. The mothers that will bear children today. Because what's coming is nothing short of mayhem and horrific. Come on. Now listen, listen. And it goes on, and the government says they've even introduced laws to protect the text, the sexting, the teen texters from Texas. Now, the teen sexters, they've even introduced laws to protect them from prosecution. Now, you think about it. Now, I'm going to hit you with the punchline. And all these hypocrite Pentecostals and jolly Baptists, orthodox, unorthodox, automatics and instamatics, they're all out there saying, right now, probably in their songs right now, Ah, the great South man, of the Holy Spirit. It's the great South land of paganism. I don't care how many stars make up the Southern Cross. We don't need the Southern Cross. We need to pick up our cross. <laughs> Woo! We need to go to the cross. Because hey? at the cross, I found forgiveness. At the cross, I found a friend. At the cross, I found Lord Jesus. At the cross, I found myself. I laid them down that day at Calvary. All my sins he gladly bared. Now I'm free. I'm free to worship. 
Now I'm free to go his way. Amen? Amen. At the cross, I found forgiveness. The Lord tells us that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing and hell bound. But it's the power of God unto salvation for them who dare believe. If you just dare believe, you will receive. And in order to receive, you have to do what he says. Because you can't receive otherwise. There's no forgiveness for unrepentant sinners. God has never once in the scriptures forgiven an unrepentant. Ever. Ever. Forgiven unrepentant sin. It cannot go unchecked in everyone's sin. Just have a look at France. Just have a look at the place. Uh, riots they're rioting they're, they're, I seen them on TV they're like wild animals it's all over petrol prices all over petrol defying the law of the land filled up with hatred and violence they, look I don't care where you look in the globe you, 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 even in Australia there, there's snow floods and, and dust storms in the south there's drought in the middle of Australia. There's typhoons and tornadoes style fire up north. It's just crazy. It just spun out of control the whole lot. Hey? I believe it's an example and a sample of what the scripture says, you know, that all hell will break loose once he who restrains is taken away. Once he takes away, once the the holy remnant go up upon the cloud to be with the Lord, all hell will break loose in the seven year tribulation that the world, great tribulation the world has never seen. I believe in the catching away of the true bride. I believe that the true bride of Christ, the true church will not be left here to go through mayhem. I believe that. I believe that it's a reward for being faithful on the sun. I believe that God is not one <clears throat> that he would uh, hand us over to destruction in the devil when we've been loyal. But the dead in Christ will rise first in those who remain and are alive and have a living, loving relationship with Jesus will be taken up upon the cloud with a shout, the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God with sound. Amen? Amen. We will be with the Lord forever. As the price we pay now or a price we pay later. We pay the price now and suffer in the flesh because we have been granted not only to believe but to suffer for his name's sake and his kingdom and everyone's son. And no one has forsaken and abandoned husband, wife, children, lands or possessions for his name's sake and the kingdom and not been rewarded 100 fold and eternal life in the next and everyone's son. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of Thessalonians today. The second letter Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica. We're going to start reading in 2 Thessalonians. Glory to the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who come to take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and 
from the glory of His power. When He comes in that day to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. You're listening. Because our testimony among you was believed. Because your testimony on that brochure that you gave to those people on the street that week because they believed it. They believed the scriptures that were written. They believed what you said Jesus done for you. They believed. So therefore, they followed on. Hey? So then, there... Your faith went out. The faith has gone out. Then we take faith in the faith. And then our faith goes out. Brother Isaira, Sister Roletta and her family and Sister Sue and... Anyone else going this week to the Gold Coast? Sister Michelle, she's going... And they're going down for the Gold Coast Glory Bound Crusade. And their faith is going out. They're not sitting at home, whinging. They're not sitting at home on their hands. Their works. They're, show me your faith and I will show you my faith by what I do. And what do I do? I don't charge for the word. That's my faith. My faith is I don't collect tithes. My faith is I have given for 31 years all the books I've written and all the brochures and everything free. That's my faith going out. That's showing the people. I trust in the Lord. I know the Lord's watching me. I know he's listening to me. I know I'll be held accountable if I don't speak the truth and I could easily be damned regardless to whether I stand in a pulpit or regardless to whether my children... Uh, are the children of a preacher they can still be damned or my wife can still be damned not because she's the wife of the preacher is there any exception but we shall sort out our own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord and everyone said amen I'm going to say hallelujah as well because I'm greedy <laughs> Because they believed. Because our testimony among you was believed. Amen? Amen. When he comes in that day to glory to be glorified in his saints. You know what glorifies the Lord? You know what brings glory to the Lord? That we want to know God and that we obey. We want to know Father, the Ancient of Days, and we want to obey His Son who gave us the message. Gospel means message. That's what brings glory to God. Hey? They are my brother. They are my sister and they are my mother. Who hear the word of God and do it. Hallelujah. So this is the 19th part of our series when we started off our series Jesus uh, atmosphere mindset or Jesus mindset atmosphere. And then we started initially in Romans 12, 1 and 2 that we must be transformed. The mind has to be transformed. We have to be transformed. And when something's transformed, it does no longer even resemble what it used to be. Sort of like the politicians 
daughter in Tasmania who's going to be transformed into a man or a, or a male. You won't even know who she is. But we're being transformed from glory to glory, strength to strength by the power of the Holy Ghost and the living word which is alive and living and sharper than any two-edged sword. Severing the bone from the marrow and the soul from the spirit, discerning the thoughts and the intentions of your heart right now. He's checking your heart to see if you believe. So, the title of the message today is We Damn Ourselves. We Damn, D-A-M-N. We damn ourselves when we go our own way. Look, everyone in this place has, a, has witnessed the moment we throttle off and go our own way. It just all turns pear-shaped. There's no more peace. There's no peace in sin. Nothing good has ever come from sin. Only pain and shame, heartache, misery, resentment, inferiority, all kinds of things that are bad and of no use or help to humanity. But repentance and, 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 and believing and, and truth and receiving the truth, just glorious results. Loving, peaceful, joyful, powerful, eternal, blessed results come from. So I know what I'm going to spend my time doing. I'm going to spend my whole life as I have so far in the last 31 years trying to help people realise that they're on the highway to hell without Jesus. They're on the highway to hell. Wow. Oh, highway to hell. But I'm on the highway of holiness. Wow. Oh, and it says the unclean will not touch the sides. If a man walks this road, he will look foolish, but he will never, ever, ever go astray. There'll be no lie. There'll be no lion or beast upon this road because it is for the redeemed of the Lord. When you're on that narrow road, you'll have lions, leopards, panthers and pumas on the side. Wow, wow. Trying to put fear into you. So you'll stop. So, so you'll go back. You'll hear the voice of the devil. Don't listen to evangelists. Listen to me. I'm Mr. Worldly Wise Man. I know more than evangelists. What's up ahead? If this has come to you so soon, what will be the end? You're best to go back. (laughs) As they did in John chapter 6, 16 to 71, they went back and walked with him no more. Because the road got a bit tough. In flaming fire taking vengeance. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 In flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God. It's distinctly a class of people. That's... That's think distinctly the wide road. That, that, that's a people that you hear and I run into every day. I don't want to know about it. I got my own religion. Let me tell you, God ain't a religion. God is not religion. We know that. We know that by the scriptures. That God ain't religious. Let me read it to you. Let's go to the book of Acts. 
the book of Acts. Acts chapter X, 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 X. Keep it down to a low roar, please, while we find this. Beautiful. I love these scriptures. Acts chapter 17. Acts 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things... You are very religious. Oh! Ah! I, I, I see that you people are very religious, Paul said. They weren't followers of Jesus. They were very religious. Verse 23. For as I was passing through and considering the object of your worship, Roman Catholic Church, United Church, Anglican. The object of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription. They were honest enough to say, we don't know God to the unknown God. You see that? God is not religious. Paul went on to tell those people, you should worship him who created heaven and earth. And all things seen and unseen, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Baru Haba. Vashem Adonai. Amen. We damn ourselves. This is our last letter. The letter D for damn in the word restricted. Because after I initiated this series, with Romans 12, 1 to 2, I then went into 2 Corinthians 6, 11 to 18, and we chose verse 12 out of there, which says, you people restrict yourselves by your own affections. And do you see the Sandy Season people, the religious Christmas people, they all are restricting themselves by partaking of this pagan season which grieves the Spirit of God because we've been told by the Scriptures and it's obvious they don't read the Scriptures and it's obvious that they don't believe the Scriptures and it's obvious they don't do the Scriptures because the Scriptures say in Galatians 4, 8-11 to we are not of days, months, seasons and years. But we are of the now in the Christ now, we are in the spirit. Now, we are in the substance, Christ. Now. And we don't know if we've got tomorrow. Because James said that, didn't he? Yes. We damn ourselves. We restrict ourselves. So this is the last letter. In the word restricted. And we deconstructed the word Restricted. And we come to the D today. That series is on our YouTube if you want the full series. 19 parts today. This is the 19th part. So, 2 Thessalonians 1 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. Well, there they are. We just read it in Acts 17, didn't we? We don't know God. To the unknown God. We don't know God. The Lord's going to take flaming vengeance. You say, oh, you know, as the Baptist church believes, oh, he, he, he might, he might um, kill you, but you're still saved. That is not true. Because let's read it again in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 9. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and be a might among those who believe because, they, because our testimony among you was believed. Everlasting destruction. 
So it's a triple emphasis, everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. So the, you're not with the Lord. Oh no, no, you know, God might, might get you out of the way. That's because he wants you to be in heaven with him. He might slay you, but he'll save you. That's stinking, rotten Baptist teaching. Pagan, Baptist, religious, sinful, carnal, Adamic teaching. The latest I heard coming from the Baptist church, more specifically the uh, NIBC, the New in- Independent Baptist Church, the latest is that Hebrews 10, 26 to 29, and even further, is talking about people who don't go to church. Because <laughs> verse 25 of Hebrews 10 says, not to forsake the assembling of the brethren together, as some do in the last days. And then they, what they've done is they stitched Hebrews 10, 25, to Hebrews 10, 26, to make it look good, so that, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, you sin, because you're saved by grace anyway. But it's a bad thing. It's sinful not to go to church on Sunday. This is Baptist. This is the damnable teaching they have. Can you say amen? Amen. Hey, what a load of hogwash. Hebrews 10 verse 26 to 39 is clear. It talks about those who go backwards. They depart from the Lord. They crucify the Christ afresh. They grieve the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of grace, power. They go back, worthy of greater punishment than those who rebelled against the law of Moses and everyone said amen. amen. But yet they stitch it together, see, to say, oh, you know. And then to, to, to contradict themselves after saying Hebrews 10, 25, you know, is a very important thing that we go to church. It is. It is important because you're growing and glowing and you're with fellow believers and it's all good. But it's not damnable. And they say, oh, well, it's sin, but it doesn't matter if you sin because you're saved by grace. (laughs) So they never read on to verse 39 of Hebrews 10, which says what? In, In Hebrews 10, verse 39, what does it say? But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. What, what's perdition? What does that mean? But of those who believe in the saving of the soul. But we are not of those who draw back to what? Perdition. Perdition is destruction. It means ruin. <laughs> and what are we reading in 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 to 10? We're reading about everlasting perdition. Everlasting destruction. (laughs) Beware, brethren. We can damn ourselves. We can damn ourselves. Even Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Many are going to come on that day and say, Lord, yoo-hoo, Lord, yoo-hoo, I'm over here. He said, What? Yes, don't you remember us? We built the buildings, we had the Christmas parties and oh, the money we spent on those pigs, I mean ham. And we all sat in front of that green tree with with, with all the idols on it and underneath it and and, and we worshipped each other, especially the ones that gave more than the others. (laughs) They got greater worship. (laughs) And uh, yeah, And, and we got drunk. And, and, oh, you know, even Uncle Bill punched one of our cousins out. Yeah. Oh, it was so awesome, Jesus. You should have been there. 
You should have been there. He was not there. <laughs> he was not there. He was outside the gate calling out. Oi, anyone in there has an ear, let it come out here. Now, please. <laughs> but they didn't because they're all deaf. Because their sin made them deaf. You know, sin does two things. It makes you blind and it makes you deaf. <laughs> As Isaiah the prophet said, we cried out all day in the street, saying songs to you even. You never come. You never come, you rebellious people. Hallelujah. Ah. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. We've done this, we've done that. He said, go away from me, you workers. You who, who work away and labour in sin. You workers of lawlessness. Go away. I know you not. You know, we can dam up. We, by our own affections, our carnal Adamic affections, we can dam up the blessing of God and, and like sort of build a wall there. And, and, and even to the place where we don't enter the kingdom. Do we restricted ourselves from the blessing that comes with obedience to the word of God? If you don't believe the great blessings of obedience, make Make it a study for yourself this week to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read the whole chapter. And it's chock a block full of cursing and blessing from the God of love. Cursing and blessing from the God of love. Chock a block. And it shows you clearly who he is. I will bless you if you do this. I will curse you if you do that. Now don't say, oh no, that's Paul Sheehan saying that. No, it ain't. It, 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 it's Yahweh. It, it's the Almighty. I don't use the word Jehovah because it's hybrid. <laughs> the God of the Hebrew people is Yahweh. Yah, Yah, Yah. It's not Jehovah. Yehovah. Sounds like Chinese or something, doesn't it? Ye. Go ye. Go Chinaman into the world. No. Go ye. Ye. Please. Go ye. No, go you. <laughs> go you. We damn ourselves. No, you can't blame no one. Oh, my mother. Oh, my, my dad did this. Oh, is it my dad's fault? You know, that I'm like I am? Really? Oh, so you're still a baby. <laughs> How old are you? You got a brain? <laughs> Do you make your own decisions? How old are you? When I came of age, I had a brain. My dad never taught me the scriptures. And I did what I wanted to do when I wanted to do. Ain't nobody going to stop me back then. But then I come you know, to a place where I had opportunity to say, now, a a a a am I going to restrict myself by rejecting this message? Am I going to uh, hold myself in derision every day and, and go on the way I'm going? Or am I going to build a wall between me and the one who's speaking to me because it's the truth? Or am I going to accept it and believe it and walk in it and get blessed. <laughs> I, I chose the latter. I chose to get blessed. I, I, I chose to do what the Lord said to do. Amen? Amen. And I have no, no problems with that. I, I, I regret nothing. All the, the persecution I've been through, the rejection, the hatred, the isolation and, 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 and insinuations, everything, it don't matter. 
because I have far greater work of glory being worked in me. And everyone said Amen. Amen. So we can dam up the blessing, the peace and the joy. There, there is no peace. There's no peace. Real peace. Not with the Hindu, the Bindu, the, not with religion, demonised denominations. There, there, there's no peace. Real, real peace. Glory is peace that surpasses the understanding of the mind. I can't understand this. It's so peaceful. It's so beautiful. I like, it's like I'm sort of like, you know, in some Havana, but I'm not. I'm just standing in the kitchen at home. Why is this joy bubbling and, and, and bubbling up in me like the rubble bubble? Why is it bubbling? Why, why am I wake up every morning, you know? And it's the same again, the same blessing again. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing on the way out, on the way in. Because it's Jesus, not stinking religion. It's Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 1 and the verse in. 8 in my Bible says, Second Thessalonians, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse eight, in flaming vengeance, taking in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. So we must remember that there's people out there and they've just said point blank, I, I know people like this. And they say, No, I don't believe there's a God. I don't want to know God. Because look at the stuff he does to the world, and, and look what he does to these children, and look what he's done to me. And he, and he hasn't done things my way, so I don't want nothing to do with your God. Well, that, that's an example of who God's going to take flaming vengeance. Flaming. And it's going to be flaming hard. It's going to be flaming hot forever and ever. Amen. There's no air conditioning in hell. There ain't no fans. <laughs> and there ain't no water. <laughs> I believe do you believe yeah I believe oh you must be saved well you're saved well, how do you know well I heard you say I believe even the demons believe and tremble but they don't do what Jesus said otherwise they wouldn't be demons would they no Oh, you got all these Baptist demons. All these jolly Baptist demons out there. They're collecting their Christmas presents. Huh? They're all out there now on the TV saying, I'm giving $500 to the Boogie Boogie appeal. You know what I mean? Just look at that. Look at me now, glorify me, look. Yeah. <laughs> and they turn around and say, what are you doing? So, well, my master told me not to tell anyone. Not even you. <laughs> when you do a good deed, don't tell anyone. So how do you know what I'm doing? Eh? Yeah? Come on. You don't know. Because my left hand don't even know what my right hand's doing. <laughs> hey, you like that? I love it. Because it's the truth. And that's what sets you free. The Christ. Jesus the Christ is the truth. It sets you free. We can just call this ministry free. Well, everything's free. The food's free in the natural. The food's free in the spiritual. The council is free. I can charge $80 an hour for council. Some people get about $200, $300 an hour for council. Psychologists, forensic, counselling, four, dollars $500 an hour. I got council better than forensic. 
This is messianic. This is God council. Woo! Not the Brisbane council. God council. Not Mayor Sawley Council or Mayor, some crooked mayor. What was his name? Pasali. Imagine his council. Woo. That was Brisbane Council. Oh, Ipswich Council. Two Thessalonians, one eight in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on that, now we go to the next lot of people and on those who do not obey. The gospel. Whose gospel? Whose message? Jesus. Gospel means message. Jesus' message. They don't obey it. Well, why didn't it say, Mr. Baptist? Why didn't it say, going to take flaming vengeance on those who do not believe the gospel? It doesn't say that, does it? Oh, no. I believe. Oh, do you believe? Yeah, I believe. What are you saying? Write him up, Billy. Well, that's another one saying? That's 600 this week. And ha- how many come to your church this week? None. Oh, I thought you said they believe. <laughs> well, obviously, he didn't believe you. I believe. Oh, really? Oh, you must be saved. <laughs> Write them up, Bill. That's another one. That's 300 souls this week. Yeah, 300 souls they ask in their stupidity and ignorance and double dumbness. Oh, do you believe? Now, come on, man, really? That's like sort of the man, you know, he went to the massage parlour and he said to the prostitute, I mean, this guy's really dumb. He said, oh, do you love me? We can't really start until I ask you, do you love me? And she says, I love you. (laughs) As she's looking over at the wallet. (laughs) Well, and then he left the massage parlour and then he's talking to his mate down the road and they're having a beer in the pot. And he said, how'd you get in that massage parlour? He said, oh, it was great. You know what she said to me? What? What did she say to you? She said she loved me. <laughs> and then his man said, Well, she must love you, because she said she loved you. <laughs> Woo! I feel good. Woo! I knew that I would not. So good, so good. I got the truth. I feel good. Woo! Yeah! Ah! More! I feel good. I'm going to stop preaching in a minute and say, you better buckle up. <laughs> I'll just turn that volume up a bit. Hang on. Ah! No. Hang on. I feel good. Why do I feel good? Because the Holy Ghost and fire is keeping me alive. So what does it say? What does it say? In verse 8, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on those who do not know, on those who do not believe the gospel. Is that what it says? Or taking vengeance on those who aren't born again? No, no, no. Taking vengeance on those who do not obey. See that? Specifically. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, we're going to go to the Hebrew and the Aztec and the... We're going to go to the Egyptian scroll and we're going to find a way out of this and we'll translate that word to mean believe somehow. <laughs> no, it says obey. Because the second lot of people here who don't obey, they're worse than the first. Because they knew God, 
but they didn't obey. Now, I've had ministers say, oh, but that's the same, they're together. They're not two different people. They don't know God and they don't obey God. Oh, really? So if they don't know God, why would God say to them to obey? Is he a hard taskmaster? Do you believe that God is such a being that he would ask you to do something that you don't know what to do? That he'd tell you to obey three things and you don't even know one of them? (laughs) No, I'm sorry. Those who do not obey the message of Jesus. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day. You see that? See where when it's going to happen? Oh, he might kill you now and destroy you, but now this is going to happen when he comes. This is going to happen when he comes. This is not some, oh, you know, God might might kill you, but he'll save you. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his presence. When he comes. In that day, double emphasis. To be glorified... In his saints. If you want to glorify God, really glorify God. As I was saying to Brother Blade only during the week, I was talking about worship. And uh, I said, true worship, the greatest worship you could ever give, God is to obey. Because Abraham obeyed God and was going to kill his son. And he said, we're going aside over here, me and my son, and I'm going to kill him. We're going aside to worship. You lot stay there because I know you have little faith and I don't want you to wreck this situation. Stay right there. I'm going over here with my son. I'm going to kill him for you, God. I'm going over here to worship. The greatest glory you can bring to God is to do what he says. Because people will look and they will watch and they will say, they'll think it's strange that you don't partake of their wickedness and carry on. You know, people think it's strange that uh, my wife and children and I don't do Christmas. They think that's strange. They think I'm mean. Callous, unloving. But I'm not. Just that they don't know me because they don't know God and they don't know God's way. They just know the unknown God. But they're very religious. They're very religious. But they don't know God. Because if they do know God, they must be in the other category. They do not obey the gospel. Or they might be both. Going to be one or the other. There's three kinds of people on earth. People who don't know God, people who know God and don't obey, and people who know God and obey. That's it. There's no one else. Male, female, black, white, rich and poor. There's no one else. Nobody else. There's those who don't know God because they don't want to know God. And then there's those who know God and don't obey God. And then there's those who know God and love to obey God. And they're the blessed of the Lord. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man. He meditates in the word and the law of God day and night. Blessed. He doesn't sit in the seats of the scornful. Blessed. He doesn't hang out with sinners. 
Oh, Jesus hung out with sinners. No, he never. Jesus went to sinners and gave them his message. And then he went aside with his disciples. Not women. Not sinners. His apostles. And he led them in to being more spiritual once again. So that they could be equipped to do the work of his ministry, not some religious business. Everyone said, amen. and amen, and amen, and amen. So, let me say this. We don't rely on our own affections. Affections are good, but as long as they're governed by the Holy Ghost. We trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. We acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways and then He will set our paths straight. You know what straight means? Straight means no twisted ankles. Straight means no stumbling. Straight means no potholes in the road. Straight means blessed. Straight means uh, filled with joy. Straight means direct. Straight means honest. Straight means forthright and righteous. Straight. He will lead you in the straight and the narrow. But it's difficult because everyone else is going the opposite way. And it's hard. I don't want hard. They're all pushing me. They're shoving me. I'm trying to come through the crowd. I'm going in the opposite direction. And they're yelling at me. And they're hating me. And they're trampling on my blue suede shoes. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Lay off of my blue sweat shoes. It can knock me down. Bring on my car. <laughs> he can drink my liquor from a bulletproof gym. He can do anything. Come on with it. <laughs> the Elvis is still singing a song in hell. With, with Frank Sinatra. And Lady Diane, they're all singing, Lay Off of My Blue Sweat Shoe. Burning! Crying out! Woo! In the fires of hell! Screaming for a drop of water! Please! Just one drop of water! Because I'm tormented in these flames! Yeah? Is that what you hear at Hillsong? <laughs> Is that what you hear at Kruger Baptist Church? Is that what you hear at COC and AOG and Hungry Jacks? Is that what you hear when you drive up to the window of Hungry Jacks? No, you just hear, I believe. What, do you believe? Yeah, I believe there's flame grilled burgers here. You believe? I believe. What does she say to you? She said she loved me. <laughs> you believe it? Yeah, I did. Because I'm an idiot. I believed it. All you got to do is say you believe and you'll be saved. That's not what we're reading today, is it? It's not what we're reading here. Paul to the Thessalonians. That's not what we're reading. Hebrews 10, 26 to 39. Crucifying the Christ afresh. Worse judgment and, and worse punishment than anyone who defied the law of Moses at the mouth of two or more witnesses. Worse. I'm going to finish up now in Revelation 14. Can we go there, please? And this will confirm everything, won't it? Revelation chapter 14, I'm starting in verse 9. This is all the God of love here. Revelation 14, verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or his hand. He himself shall also drink of the 
of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire, brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of Jesus. And the smoke of their torments ascended forever and forever. And they have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast and his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep, 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 keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write this down, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works follow them. You see that? I, uh, I just believe. Oh, really? You believe, do you? I believe. Well, you're saved. No commands involved. Nothing. No New Testament commands. Throw them in the bin. Throw the Ten Commandments in the bin. Throw every command in the Bible in the bin when it comes to the New International uh, Baptist Church Fundamentalist. Throw all the commands in the bin. You don't need to do them. That's the devil himself. That's the beast. Let me tell you who are of the beast. I can tell you now. I don't know who the beast are, is, but I know who is of the beast. Every single man and woman on earth right now that is not of the lamb and promoting the lamb is of the beast. And they're doing what he says. And let me tell you, Christmas is not of the lamb, it's of the beast. Just tell me this, have you ever heard of the world, the world doing what Jesus says? Well, that tells you that it's clear, isn't it? Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus. Because the world does Christmas in a bigger way than anyone. Everyone said? Amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. What a day. What a, what a morning. This beautiful, cool, winterish morning. I just love this cool, beautiful uh, weather. Isn't it lovely? Amen. I give you all the glory, Jesus.